for a taste of some of the area's finest artists. Join us next on Carolina People, here at Collector's Cafe. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're in Myrtle Beach at Collector's Cafe and Art Gallery. We're focused on the fall art show which kicked off last Wednesday, October 23rd, and we're visiting with some of the finest artists in the Carolinas. To kick off the week, we're visiting with the president and owner, one of the two owners of Collector's Cafe, Mike Smith. Mike, thanks so much for being with us this oh, morning. Thanks, Greg. Let's talk a little bit about yourself. Are you originally from the area? Not originally. I grew up overseas in the Netherlands and then uh, came over here, went to Clemson, um, then got recruited to come to Myrtle Beach by a computer company. Decided to stay here and uh, here we are. We opened up Collectors, you know, eight years later. Did you uh, study art when you were in school or was it all computer science? Not at all. I'm, I've never had an art class. Uh, I've always loved art. I, I don't think you really uh, have to be, you know, have to have gone to an art class or an art school in order to appreciate art. Um, I grew up appreciating art over in Europe, you know, going to, you know, all the big cities over there and just loved all the galleries and museums and I studied uh, engineering in school, mm. so uh, that really helped me, uh, enable me to build this place. Yeah, that would have helped quite a bit. Yeah, and then, so, the art, and then the art appreciation, of course, you know, that got the cultural involvement in. Very definitely. So you were, you were uh, before, before setting up collectors, you were an engineer by trade. Yeah, I was electrical and computer engineering. Is that right? Yeah. Well, what, was there any particular inspiration that got you into art? Had you... Um... Um, I've, I've always drawn, ever since I was a little kid, you know, I used to... Uh, I used to draw in class just just to stay awake, you know. You know how you're, you're always going to sleep in class when you're a little kid, and mm -hmm. I was I draw to stay awake, and um, just kept drawing and drawing and drawing, and really uh, didn't start painting till we opened up Collectors. That's when I started painting seriously, because right. I had a place to exhibit my work. Before I never really had a place to exhibit, except in the classroom. Yeah, except in the classroom, right. passing the notes between friends, and right. you know, hey, here's the teacher's picture. <laughs> That would probably come off pretty well. Do, do yeah. you have a favorite medium now? What? Yeah, I paint uh, strictly in oils, and I do a little bit of mixed media, which means I mix some stuff in with the oils. But um, I've never done acrylic or watercolor or, or any of the other mediums, just really just oils, because that's really what I have the supplies for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you think about, when, when people think about your work, would they, would they, in their mind, easily think Mike particularly focuses on... I mean, do you have a favorite subject? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> um, I paint surrealism, and that's uh, what that is. It's kind of like Picasso and Dolly. Um, things that may look real, but they're not. And I paint a lot of abstract work. Um, and that's pretty much what I concentrate on. The galleries that I do show in feature surrealism as their main art style. Mm -hmm. So that's what, I, that's what I do. Well, that ties into the next question. If you exhibit your art here at the gallery, here at the cafe and mm -hmm. gallery, or, and, and obviously you must exhibit at other galleries. Where where do you primarily uh, exhibit? Um, I'm exhibited at a couple of different galleries in New York, a Gore Gallery, and then I'm exhibiting now in um, Amsterdam Whitney Gallery. Mm. And um, they're both surrealism galleries, that's what they feature. And uh, yeah, and then uh, and of course I do it here too, so. Mm -hmm. Are you known as Mike Smith in your uh, painting? No, I'm known as uh, Michael Craig up there in New York. Uh, that's, oh. That started a long time ago. That's a whole other story. But, um, yeah, that's what I signed my paintings as, and that's what I'm known as. Michael Craig. Yeah. Okay. That's my first and middle name. Uh-huh, uh-huh. How about, uh, real quick, about the, uh, the cafe and the gallery. How did the idea come about? And uh, maybe you could tell a little bit, I think, later at the end of the week, we'll wrap up the week with, uh, with the other owner, of the cafe, yeah. how did the idea of coming up with an art gallery and um, and, and cafe come, come together? Well, from, from the I guess like ten years ago, um, Tommy, which is the other owner besides myself, he and I would ride around town looking for something to do that's that's cultural and different. And of course, there wasn't really anything in this town, and um, so we decided, well, we need to just build a place. Didn't really know what we wanted to build. We just wanted to build a place that had art and culture and uh, so we could introduce it to the people at Myrtle Beach. Um, our original idea was, of course, we wanted to bring a coffee shop in because there was no coffee shop in Myr there was one coffee shop in Myrtle Beach at the time. And that was, that was kind of the hot thing 10 years ago, you right. know, with Starbucks and all that. Sure. 
And then we, we uh, thought, well, we could build a dance club, you know, or something mm -hmm. like that, and have an art gallery along with it. Mm -hmm. Something real cultural, something real different that no one's ever done before. And done with a lot of style and class. And um, the city had nixed the uh, dance club idea because of the zoning. So we had to introduce some food. We said, well, let's, let's do some food. And neither one of us had worked in a restaurant before. We had no restaurant experience. So um, we got my sister involved. And my sister had worked at a couple restaurants around town, and, and she was interested in helping us out. So she was the one that really told us that we needed salt and pepper shakers on the table, and we needed a fork. We needed two forks, you know, and a spoon and a knife. We didn't know any of this stuff. Um, but she helped us with the whole restaurant thing, and then we got a great chef to begin with. And we really have a, a lot of the staff that we have now it was with us eight years ago when we began. So you kicked it off eight years ago, in 94? Four. Yeah, 94. Okay. We still have the original chef. Our sous chef is one of the original guys from when we started. And our other sous chef, which is our assistant chef, um, he's another guy that has been with us for like on and off for like the last eight years. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a whole e evolution of things. We really didn't intend it to be like this. Mm -hmm. It just evolved into this. Mm -hmm. And we're just lucky it did. So art shows were kind of part of the original plan or maybe not. You planned an art gallery, but did you know you'd, you'd have what you kicked off last week, the fall art show? We really, we didn't know anything about art shows when we opened. We had, <laughs> we had no clue. Um, the art shows all came about, you know, we, we've taken a lot of trips and been to a lot of art shows and other galleries, especially right. New York, you know, I've probably been to, you know, 50 art shows in New York. And um, really got the idea of how to present the artwork and how to hang the stuff. There's a whole, um, set of techniques as far as presenting your artwork mm -hmm. and, and doing shows for different artists. We have 25 artists, 25. So, so we try to present every artist uh, differently and present them well so they can represent themselves. Mm -hmm. But yeah, none of that really um, was our intentional plan. We just wanted to hang artwork. And uh, at the very beginning, we had some good artists. There's, there's some local talent here that's just phenomenal. It's yes. probably some of the best in the state, best in the region. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and so we... You know, we, we started out and we've got some guys from New Mexico, we've got some local artists and people from Charlotte and Charleston and, and kind of combined them all, threw them all up together and uh, it was all great artwork to begin with. Mm -hmm. We never had a problem with finding good artists. It shows. We're excited about highlighting a number of those artists this week, uh, throughout throughout the week and yeah. wrapping up highlighting the fall art show. One last thing, Mike, we got to wrap up in a second. Is there any particular part of uh, not only owning but exhibiting here? That you're you're most excited about um, our food <laughs> I tell you what our food is definitely the best I've ever had I, I, we like um, we like low-fat food we like food with a lot of flavor and that's our favorite kind of food food that keeps you healthy and that's that's really that, that excites us every day on a day-to-day -day basis and our staff the artwork um, inspires me and Tommy both to uh, create new works of art you know we we look around, our artwork changes daily. You know, we, we bring in new artwork every single day from some artist. So um, our, the artwork con con continually changes and um, gets you new ideas and you get to see new techniques and it's just, it's just great. Yeah. Mike Smith, president and co-founder of Collectors Cafe and Art Gallery here in Myrtle Beach, founded in 1994. Originally the idea was a dance club. Obviously turned into much better than that. Mike, thanks again for being with us this morning. Okay, thanks again, Greg. Real excited about being here. Right. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning we're at Collector's Cafe and Art Gallery in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the fall art show that kicked off last Wednesday, and we're visiting with some of the finest artists here in the Carolinas. This morning we're visiting with Karen Edgar. Karen, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. A great treat highlighting some of the artists. Just had um, Mike Smith on, one of the owners here of the cafe, who was talking about some of the reasons why uh, uh, they really like to, to focus on uh, Grand Strand area artists, and I guess you're one of those. I'm fortunate enough to be represented here at Collectors. Yes. Yeah. Are you? Uh, let's talk a little bit about yourself, Karen. Are you originally from the area? No. Originally, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, but I've been in this area for 19 years now. Hmm. Did you uh, did Did you go to school to study art? No, I'm self-educated. Oh, great. Tr trial and error. Trial and error. <laughs> and, and and how long have you been um, 
How long have you been painting? Um, I've been working with arts and crafts pretty much all my life. Mm -hmm. My mother was always into it, so I kind of emulated her. I've been doing the medium that I'm doing now for about six years and professionally mm -hmm. for four. Mm. Do you work anything else other than your art, or is art a, a full-time passion? Um, I help my husband in his office a couple of mornings mm. a week. Mm -hmm. mm. A couple of uh, days a week? Right. Okay, great. Had you, um, before you turned to art as a, as a full-time passion, had you, had you worked in another medium that was related to art in any way? Um, I'm a musician, mm. so I'm a violinist, mm -hmm. but not really in any other like visual type art other than just as a hobby. Hmm. How about your favorite medium, Karen? Uh, what I'm working in now is charcoal and black pastel. And so now that's my favorite medium, but eventually I'd like to experiment with some other things. When folks think of your work, if uh, either displayed here or displayed in other, other galleries, but uh, when, when they think of you in particular as an artist, is there a, is there a subject that that uh, some of your fans would be particularly familiar with, or uh, is there a subject that you're particularly interested in? Well, most of my pieces are portrait type work, so mm -hmm. I'm always doing people, and I tend to focus on um, human emotion more mm -hmm. than anything else, and also I do a, a lot of musicians is that because right? I'm a great admirer of music. Right, sure, that probably helps. When did you first know that uh, you wanted to be an artist? Was there any particular event that happened in your life? Uh. Well, um, my husband and I had bought a house and we had a big wall that needed to have some artwork on it. And he was always a big fan of black and white photography. And we had found four photographs by Ansel Adams and Alfred Stieglitz that we really liked, but we couldn't find them commercially. And I told him that I believed that I could do them in charcoal, and that's what I did initially. And um, after looking at them for a couple of years, he said that he thought I was wasting my time in the profession I was in and that I should start concentrating on my art. Mm. So it happened right in, in the home. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. When did you first begin? So it was at that occasion that you first began producing art, uh, right. your artwork. What year was that? Um, I've been producing professionally since 1998. Since 1998, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Are your pieces shown primarily uh, in South Carolina or primarily on the Grand Strand? Mostly they are. I do occasional jury competitions in different states. Um, I've done one in New York and I've done one in California. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And in North Carolina. That's within the last four years. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I understand there was a, a, a pretty amazing day in the, in the recent past that, uh, that you not only won one award, not only a second award, but actually won three awards in the same day for your for your art. Right, I, I was blown away by that. Um, I had a piece at the Walk of Arts and Crafts Guild annual jury show mm -hmm. here at, in Myrtle Beach, and also I had a piece, and still have a piece in the Florence Museum um, for the PD Regional, and uh, both of the receptions were held on the same night. So I attended the one here first because the other one was later, and I figured I could leave and get there in time for the award ceremony. And um, I found out I had won Best of Show here, and within five minutes after winning that, I had to leave. So <laughs> I was like, thanks for the money, bye. <laughs> and oh I was my on my God. way to Florence, wow. and I got there, and I won the uh, People's Choice Award and the Top Award for the piece there as well. Amazing. I know. That is amazing. He won the People's Choice Award and the top award for a piece. How many people? Right. Can you just tell the viewers a little about what it's, uh, what it's like at an art show? I, for viewers who may not have been to a show, how, how do they, does a show oftentimes just focus on a particular art? Like Tom was talking about, he likes surrealism. And so right. uh, does he, would, would most art shows just be about a particular medium? No, uh, most of the, well, the ones that I've always attended have, um, there are some that do specific mediums. Right. They might do all watercolors or all oils or something like that. But the ones that I go to usually uh, represent a lot of different mediums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you get a good diversity. Sure, sure, which probably gives you a, a, a pretty good uh, sense of accomplishment if you pull off any awards, uh, knowing that uh, right. the judges are focused on lots of different art. and, and Right, and some of them, um, most of them are, well, they're all educated in art and artists themselves. Mm -hmm. And they usually have their own favorite medium, but they don't 
a lot of times tend to pick their own medium when they God, pick the winner. That must so be so tough. That's pretty, I know, I don't know how they do judge. it. Yeah. Have you ever judged any kind no. of No, <laughs> no. I like everything too much. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> that must be tough. Yeah. That must be tough. It, um, do you have any family that are involved in the arts? Obviously, a, a, if, you, if you grew up interested in music, maybe there's a musician in the family. Right. Um, my mom and dad are both musicians, and my mother's the one that influenced me the most in my artwork because she was always experimenting with different types of arts and crafts. Mm -hmm. And from the time that my brother and sister and I were really little, we were doing those things along with her. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of emulated her. Is there an artist in particular that, that inspires you when you think of, I know you mentioned Ansel Adams. Right, I think artists. great photographers are probably. Great um, photographers, yeah, uh -huh. Are probably my inspiration. Can you tell uh, the viewers real quick about one of the pieces that you, that you have exhibited uh, here at the Fall Art Show? Well, the one that we have in front of us here is um, a picture of Bruce Springsteen. And um, I don't know if you want me to tell you how I go about doing this. Or yeah, want... please. we got a, a less than a minute. Okay. I start out with a piece of white illustration board and put in my initial sketch with charcoal pencil. And then I take um, black pastel, soft black pastel, and start rubbing in the darks and building shadows upon shadows until the image is completed. That's amazing. Well, it's a it's a stunning piece. And, Thank you. And, and do, for viewers who may not know who that is, it's Bruce Springsteen, the boss. Yes. Who's I like I like to have at least one piece that people are going to recognize in a show because it creates an instant um, connection with the piece, and it also helps to promote my um, my commission portrait work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Karen Edgar one of the artists focused here at the Fall Art Show, Collector's Cafe and Art Gallery, kicked off last Wednesday, October 23rd. Be going for a number of months. Stop in to check out her works. Karen, thanks so much for being with us this Thank morning. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. Today we're at Collector's Cafe and Art Gallery in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on their fall art show that kicked off last Wednesday, and we're visiting with one of the artists that's displayed at the gallery, Kim Clayton. Kim, thanks so much for being with us this Hi, morning. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Kim, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Are you originally from the area? I'm originally from Chattanooga, Tennessee, but okay. I've been here for the last four years. Four years? What brought you to Myrtle Beach? My husband. Oh, great. Good. And, uh, is, is he an artist as well? No, he is a uh, supplement provider. Oh, boy. He's a busy, uh, busy guy, I'm sure. Oh, yes, definitely. When did you realize you had a passion for art? Uh, I guess since I was a kid. My grandfather was an artist and, um, well, actually still is, and he's a designer for the recliner, um, Berkline. For Berkline? Yes. He designs recliners. Used to, yes, he's retired now. Well, that must be a very relaxing job. <laughs> yeah, I that, think so. <laughs> it, it was that in Tennessee? Morristown, Tennessee, yes. Have you uh, have you taken any art lessons? Did you study art in school? Uh, High school. Um, I uh, tried graphics uh, for a little while, but I knew that I, I wanted to paint. So I just taught myself. And painting is... Uh, is it, your primary medium is, what's your primary medium, excuse me? Act junk, actually. It's junk. I re everything's recycled. All my things are from uh, things that have been thrown out or found objects. And Isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> I, that's amazing. Now, how do you go about uh, junk? So there's, uh, I was about to say, how do you go about collecting all that? But I guess you can really go anywhere to get that. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yes. That's amazing. What prompted you to get involved with junk? Well, at the time when I first started thinking that I wanted to start painting again, um, I uh, didn't have the funds to be able to buy canvas or whatever, so I found pieces of wood that people had uh, thrown out for um, construction sites, and uh, so I'd grab it and start painting on it. Mm. Mona Lisa was painted on wood, why not? Mona Lisa was painted on wood. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's amazing. Are there some other famous pieces that were painted on wood? There's a lot I know there is out there. <laughs> is, uh, now, when you when 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 folks talk about your art, Kim, do they? I mean, do, do you refer to it as as junk? Uh, <laughs> obviously, you refer to it as an art. 
Uh, it's recycled visual art. I recycled think. visual art. More contemporary. Who are some other well-known recycled visual artists? Or um... Howard Finster. He was um, mm -hmm. the grandfather of folk art, is what they call it. It's um, he started when he was in his 60s, and he was like probably the most well-known folk artist in America. Mm -hmm. Howard Fenster. Yes. Is he still... Uh, Passed away last year. Is that right, just last year? Yes, he did uh, like the R.E.M. album covers and Talking Head album covers, mm -hmm. things like that. I've seen those. Was there anything in particular, uh, any stage in life that, that helped you determine that you were going to focus on this particular form of art? I know you said it was uh, uh, because it was you, it was cheaper mm -hmm. uh, was, uh, than having to buy canvas and getting out. But was there any particular event? You, you talked about your grandfather. Um, it's just something I love to do, and I felt like that I couldn't stop doing it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I just enjoy it. And, it, and it. and it truly is your grandfather who inspired you. Yes, definitely. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Is that when you think of your grandfather? Um, did he, did he ever, you said he was the designer for mm -hmm. recliners, did he ever uh, have a chance to, is, is he still living? Yes, he is. Has he had a chance, I guess he's had a chance to see much of your work. Yes, he's actually been here. You've been to Collector's yes, Cafe and Art Gallery, is that right? <laughs> yes, a matter of fact, some of the same galleries that carried his work here in Myrtle Beach, um, my work's in also. Is that right? How long have you been displaying? Two years. Okay, two years. Full time now, yeah. And are you primarily exhibiting at Collectors, or do you exhibit in other locations? Uh, um, from New Orleans to New York, actually, and, uh, but Collectors have been wonderful. Um, here and then House of Blues and Polly's Island, uh, Hammock Shop also. House of Blues. Are you currently exhibiting at House of Blues? Yes, yes I'm one of their um, local artists. How many local artists do they have? Do you know? Oh, goodness. Oh, sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> not many, not many, but right. um, they they're have... Um, some amazing art there too. Mm -hmm. Oh, very definitely. Yeah, if if folks were visiting, obviously this week's folks on the fall art show at Collectors. Right. But if folks were visiting House of Blues, where would they uh, see some of your pieces? In the gift shop and in the bar. <laughs> okay, in the gift shop and in the bar. How about um, um, the, the the shows in? You said in New you've you've exhibited in New York and down to. Uh, New Orleans. Okay. Just got back from New Orleans, actually. Is that right? Swamp Fest. <laughs> Swamp Fest. Yes. I was about to ask, is it, it when you show, is, do you primarily show with other, um, I don't want to call it junk art. You had a, ni a nicer <laughs> name for it, but I like junk art. Yeah, it cool. it's yeah. fine. Um, right. We have Earth Fest, which is a, it's at the zoo. Most of our shows are at the zoo there in, in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and um, a bunch of recycle artists get together and, and show. That's what it was, was recycled artists. Yeah. Well, there was one other word in there. <laughs> visual? Re visual recycled artists. There you That's go. right. Great. <laughs> I like that. I like uh, big, big, big words like that. <laughs> have you, uh, have you uh, um, not to put you on the spot in that regard, but have you yet uh, achieved any awards for, for exhibits? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. Um, in Athens and in um, Columbia, Georgia. Okay. And, yeah. Great. So, uh, in the last four years of, uh, which has been your, you've been here four years. Yes. You've been exhibiting for two. two years. So, in the last two years, you've already picked up awards. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> That's spectacular. Can you tell the viewers uh, real quick about any of the pieces that you have? I think right behind us is a, is a piece that, um, that we could focus on. Could you tell the viewers a little bit about how that was put together? Well, uh, the wood is cabinet wood. There's a great cabinet shop locally that um, throws out their wood, uh, their scraps, and saves them for me. So I, mm -hmm. that way I don't have to go through a bunch of really gross junk, you know. Mm -hmm. But, and then the paint uh, can is the actual middle of the flower. That's the top of a paint can. Yes, it is. Is that the top or the bottom? Actually the top. That's the top. It's kind of neat, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. What it, when folks think of your art, uh, particularly, do they think of... I mean, do you do uh, flowers a good bit? Do you do, um, flowers, do you have a particular subject? Um, a lot of women. I do women. I, I seem to enjoy doing that because it's um, come easy to me. Mm -hmm. And um, also uh, angels. Angels and women. Yeah. Do the, do the angels come out looking like women? Yes. I mean, are the yeah, angels almost really always, always women? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have That's to good. admit. Kim Clayton. Junk art is uh, is one word. I, I can't even remember the other, but junk art is a very exciting medium, a, a recycled visual artist.
Thanks so much for being with us this morning, Kim. <laughs> Come check out her work at Collectors Cafe and stay tuned for more Carolina people coming up next.